All right, folks, so just a little follow-up video for you. Like I said, this is the exclusion plot. You can see the fence around it, sheep fence, barbed wire, pretty much still intact. You can see what's inside that. Over to this side was the grazed area. You've still got all of your alpine daisies. You've still got all your waxy buttercups. You've still got your heath. You've got your alpine grasses. You've got mosses. I mean, Kath, who's with me today, stopped in one little spot about 100 metres from where we are. And I kid you not, in a 30 centimetre by 30 centimetre square, she identified 16 different species of plant. But we're leaving the exclusion plots now. We're going back into an area outside the exclusion plots, into an area that was constantly and consistently summer grazed for nearly 170 years. Have a look at this. All the different plant life, all the different species, all doing really, really well. And yeah, I know those woke scientists like Mr. Driscoll and his mate, um, Jamie, up there at um, Canberra and, you know, all these national parks people and you know, Mark Normans and your Mr. McLaughlin's and all their buddies... They're all going to turn around and say, but Dino, you do realise since we kicked the cattle out, the whole area is an exclusion zone. And yeah, I do. I mean, there's a few Brumbies still running up here, 65 of them. Um, I think I worked out if you divided the Bogong zone of the Alpine National Park by 65 horses, they had something like 3,170 hectares per horse to roam in. Um, you know, as an ex-farmer, I would have loved to have been able to have stocking rates like that and turn a profit. <laughs> but the fact is, you've just seen inside an area that was excluded from grazing for 70 years, you're out here in an area that's been excluded for, you know, 25 to 30. Um... And we're told by these scientist types, these university types, these Parks Victoria bosses, that as a result of the impacts of grazing, the high country's been devastated, destroyed, yada yada. And this proves just how bullshit that statement is because it's here, it's surviving, it's thriving, it's doing just as well, if not better, to be perfectly honest, than the inside of that exclusion zone. All right, so we're coming back up on the road. The exclusion zone's not far off the road. Um, you know, feel free, come up and have a look. We're not far from Copac Car Park. In fact, we're probably 200 metres up the road on the Falls Creek side of that car park. And... The exclusion zone fencing is just over the other side of that little rise which is maybe two to three hundred meters off the road so if you don't uh, believe my videos if you don't agree with what I'm saying come and have a look for yourself it's not hard <clears throat> it's not hard to find it's not hard to get to uh, make up your own mind the bottom line is I'm not going to tell you how to get there though nah well unless you message me the visual proof of it is all here. It's all here for you to see. It shuts down their bullshit. It shuts down their arguments. It does it emphatically. So stop sitting down there in Melbourne, swallowing up everything you hear because this person's a professor at a university. Um, anybody can sit through a course and write a paper. They just have to be diligent. They don't have to be right. Um, you know, you can earn a PhD, otherwise known as a doctorate, by being wrong in everything you do. Time. You just have to spend time showing that you've done your research in accordance with proper procedures. And even if the outcome is not what you were looking for, 
you'll still pass and you'll still be able to call yourself a doctor. So, can I add my two cents in? You can add your two cents in, Kath. So he's the CEO of Parks Vic at the moment. He sits in head office down in Melbourne in a in a leather swivel chair behind a desk. Oh, I'm trying to remember his name now. Um, Dr. Mark Norman is their chief scientist. Okay, well, um, he needs to come up on. He's an octopus man. He needs to come up. A group of them need Matthew to Jackson, come I think it is. For a week. I've, I've invited them all to come up. I'll do it again. Uh, Matthew Jackson, Dr. Mark Norman, Daniel McLaughlin, any of the people that you want to bring with you. Um, you come up, meet me up here. We'll go for a walk. I'll show you the whole of the Bogong High Plains rather than the selected little areas that Mr. Driscoll and those people you like to listen to show you photos of. Um, you've got to spend a few but, days up here too. You know, exactly right. And you've got to come up with an open mind. You've got to come up prepared to actually see the evidence for yourself. Open your eyes. And um, make decisions based on the actual evidence you see rather than a little paper with a couple of photos on it. I mean, for God's sake, your or, Parks Victoria Wild Management, uh, Wild plot. Horse Management Plan. Or a plot. Yep, exactly. You can't go off a plot. Yep. A plot is so, a, a little section of a massive ecosystem. Correct. And, uh, you know, when you want to do things like use photos of Mount Feathertop in your wild horse management plan, um, I'll, I'll call bullshit on you every day of the week because Brumbies have never existed on Mount Feathertop. People might have ridden horses up there while they were grazing leases. But they have here. Um, but, you know, you're just tugging at people's heartstrings and you're trying to um, blur the lines in favour of bullshit decisions that have been made that aren't based on science. It's categorical. Come and have a look. Meet me up here.